Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the Moondrop Land. This is Moondrop's latest $40 IM, and ostensibly, it is re the replacement to the Moondrop SSR, which is an IM that came out now almost three years ago, but ever since then has kind of been my favorite, my go-to pick for around 40 bucks. And if you saw the title of this video, you know that I actually think the LAN is better than the SSR, but if you are an astute viewer, you may have noticed the asterisk in there, because while I do think that the LAN is better than the SSR in a number of ways, more ways than one, I don't know that it's better in every way, and we'll, we're gonna get to that. So, like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. If you're here now live, you have any questions about the LAN that I don't get to in the review, feel free to leave it in the live chat, and at the end of the review, we'll have some time for a back and forth conversation. Um, other than that, I guess a quick shout out to Shenzhen Audio for sending in the land for review. If you want to check out the land, I got a link to Shenzhen in the description down below. And with that out of the way, I guess we'll just jump to the table and start talking about the physical stuff of this IM before we get into talking about the sound and then some comparisons with a couple of other Moondrop IMs, as well as my favorite kind of, uh, basically the IM, my favorite neutral tuned IM in the, uh, the, the, the Concha combat tournament that you may have missed in December. Anyway, um, that was too much. Let's talk about the build quality and the physical stuff. First of all, the packaging, here you go. The box is very tall and I appreciate that this art is safe for my stream. Um, yeah, nice looking artwork. In fact, they even include the artwork on a, uh, it looks like a, a, a postcard in the box. So if you wanna send that to a friend or send it to yourself and pretend you got a friend, go for it. Um, apart from that, honestly, the accessories are pretty minimal, but it's a $40 IM, so set your expectations. They do have a little carry pouch. Um, it's interesting that Truth Ear has been including these soft carry pouches lately, and now Moondrop is suspicious. But otherwise, I don't know. It's a decent little carry case, obviously. Um, it's not going to be the most protective because it is soft, but it will fit into a pocket nice and easily, and I appreciate that. Um, apart from that, you get, well, you get a set of ear tips, of course, but maybe what you are noticing now is that these are not Moondrop's spring tips. Uh, in fact, yeah, they just they, they ship these with Moondrop's standard tips, and I'm not totally certain why. Um, I should actually ask Moondrop about that, but I will say that I spent some time listening to this IM with spring tips on it and with the stock tips, and I prefer the fit of the spring tips, but kind of prefer what it did with the sound with the stock tips. Um, obviously, I think Generally, my thoughts on tips affecting sound is that that's going to really come down to how it couples with your particular ear and that particular IM. But nonetheless, that was my experience with the tips here on the LAN. Uh, apart from that, there's nothing else in the box. So let's just get into talking about the build quality on the LAN. And we will start with this cable, which I'm about to gush about because I love this cable which is probably no surprise for you because it's basically the exact same cable that came on the Moondrop SSR. And that was a cable that I said a lot of really good things about in my review. And I probably even undersold it a bit because this is a cable that has for the past few years been kind of my go-to when I want to get a new cable for an IM. Either I take one off of my existing SSRs or I have in fact bought Moondrop SSRs just to have a spare cable. Um, because I like it so much. And this one, okay, it does look a little bit different. They've added uh, like a black strand in there intertwined, but it is otherwise the same cable. And why I like this cable so much is the behavior on it. You can see that it's lying flat. It has no memory to it. Um, it's just soft and supple. It's thin and lightweight. And I don't know, it just kind of does everything well. Okay, apart from this, they did unfortunately keep the, the too large Y split, which to be honest, at this point, I've gotten used to it and it doesn't bother me too much. But I will say the other thing that this thing, that this cable could improve on, uh, if Moondrop were so inclined, is to add a chin cinch. It doesn't have a chin cinch. I typically will add my own using a, uh, a little silicone O-ring, but I don't know, stock for stock, it is still a very, very nice cable. Uh, and of course, you've got your preformed ear hooks up here and you've got your Moondrop typical two pin connectors. Of course, you can swap that out with a different cable if you want. And that is a big difference between this IM and the Moondrop Chew, which is now bringing us into talking about the ear pieces, which if you are familiar with the Moondrop Chew, this might look pretty familiar. Obviously, it's a different color. This is a painted silver color, um, but it is, as far as I can tell, the exact same shape and fit as the Moondrop Chew. Uh, it's just got a removable cable, which 
I think is a pretty nice improvement, especially given how poor quality the cable was on the Moondrop 2. Um, okay, let's real quickly talk about the aesthetics and the build on this thing. Uh, the shells are an all metal shell which is nice. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, it is, again, I did mention it's painted. I know some people have had issues with Moondrop's paint. I personally have not had those issues, but fair warning to people, some people have had issues with paint peeling on Moondrop's IMs in the past. Um, but I think it's a really handsome IM, to be honest. I think it's just, you know, it's kind of plain and understated. Uh, I did like what they did with the SSR, where the SSR was available in multiple colors, and that kind of made it a little bit more extra fun, whereas this just looks plain and understated and that's what you're gonna get but to be honest I don't hate it I think it's a really nice build on the $40 IM and an even nicer fit to be honest so uh, I think I talked about this when I reviewed the Chew the Chew actually fits me really quite well and of course because this is the same shell uh, it fits me just as well I did say it fits a little bit better with the SSR tips uh, mostly just because it will go a little bit deeper into my ear canal um, which gives me a bit more secure of a fit but Honestly, I, w even with the stock tips, like this is a really nice fit. You can see that it is well nestled into my concha back here. Uh, it is behind the tragus, which means the tragus does a little bit of a, a, a helping job to hold it in place. But yeah, just generally is one of the more stable dynamic driver I am fits out there. Um, and honestly, it even fits me better than the Moondrop SSR. It's a pretty small IM, not as small as the SSR. We'll get into that comparison a little bit later. Um, but it is nonetheless a small IM by most people's standards. And I think if you like a small IM, or if you want to fit a small IM, you're going to like this. It's actually a really good fit um, for sleeping as well. Um, but I think that is going to do it for as much as I can say about the physical stuff. Really don't have any complaints apart from I do wish it had a, a chin cinch. But... Other than that, really dig the build quality on this item. And for 40 bucks, I don't know. Not having any complaints about the build, that's pretty nice. So let's now talk about the sound. Do I have complaints about the sound? And like I typically do, I'll start by talking, just kind of describing the overall sound signature, which you should expect. And then I'll talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, before we get into the comparison. So the sound signature here on the LAN, is effectively a neutral sound signature, okay? If you look at the frequency response graph, it maybe could look a little bit like a mild V-shaped sound signature, but I do think that in listening experience, this sounds more midsy than contrasty, which is kind of my definition of neutral versus V-shaped. So uh, I'm gonna go with, this is basically a neutral tuned IEM, which means bass heads should probably just go home right now, okay? This is not a bassy IEM. If you are looking for a bassy IEM, there are a lot of options out there for you please go look at one of those and stop saying that everything needs to have a lot of bass because sometimes I don't like a lot of bass and the bass levels here are within neutral range, within range of my neutral target, which it means I like the bass levels on here. Okay, I'm getting into what I like. I'm just gonna say, there's not a ton of bass here. Uh, the upper mid range and treble tuning on this thing are very polite and I would say very, very well done. Again, you can look at the frequency response and I'll give you a pretty good idea, but I will say also in listening experience, it is still the case. Uh, upper mid range is not overly forward. Um, people who are concerned about shoutiness probably won't have an issue here. Uh, not one. I'm not one of those people, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, just overall, I would say this is a very easy, somewhat warm, chill version of a neutral sound signature. So. What do I like about the sound here on the Moondrop LAN? And well, that description of the sound signature is kind of exactly what I like to hear. Um, again, if you look at it on a frequency response graph, uh, compare it with my neutral target, it's, you know, it's got some mild deviations, but it is basically uh, uh, neutral per my, my tastes. And I like that a lot. And maybe even more to the point, you know, the Moondrop 2 was an IM that was also kind of pretty similar. It was very, you know, adherent to my my neutral my idea of neutral um but this actually fixes kind of the the, the two main issues that i had with the moon drop chew one i would say that the bass is ever so slightly more emphasized on the land than it is on the chew but two maybe even more importantly is the treble is just significantly more controlled here on the LAN. And that was my biggest issue. And I think most people's issues with the LAN, I mean, I'm sure some people are gonna say the LAN needs a ton more bass, or sorry, not the LAN, the Chew needs a ton more bass. I didn't think it needed a ton more bass. It just needed the treble to be a little bit better controlled. And I think that the LAN honestly does that. 
does it really, really well. Just overall gives you a nice, smooth, easy treble presentation on the set. Zero sense of harshness. In fact, it does really, really well with sibilant recordings. Um, my go-to sibilance test is Church's Graffiti. Uh, which if you're familiar with that track, it just hits with a bunch of sibilants back to back to back. Um, and it's in the recording. Most headphones will play it, you know, sibilant because it's in the recording, but the land actually does a really, really good job. Just kind of skated through it without it being harsh at all. Um, and I think the treble even like extends well enough to lend a natural timbre to high frequency percussion, which is to say, Things like cymbals, hi-hats, and drum brushes are gonna sound natural. They're not gonna sound like stick-like, or like they're not gonna sound like they have like kind of a, a, a premature decay on them. Uh, I think the, the land has sufficient treble extension to do that stuff well. Um, and then the final thing that I'll say that I like about the sound here is, again, it, this kind of gets back to the tonality, but the bass levels on this, I like, right? The bass is out of the way and it extends well into the sub bass. If you're looking for that deep rumble, it can do it, but it's just not gonna be in your face about it. And again, I know some people, for some people that's a bad thing. For me, that's a good thing. And if you know that's a good thing for you, well, that's definitely a good thing here with the land. But there have got, of course, gotta be some things I don't love here about the land. So let's get into talking about what I don't. You got great build quality. You've got great tuning. It's 40 bucks. That sounds too good to be true where this thing is not necessarily bad, but kind of average would be in the technical performance. Okay. Again, it's not bad, but it's maybe a little bit average and a little bit, it leaves some to be wanting. Um, imaging and staging, I would say is average, but again, most IEMs kind of are, so that's, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about. Mostly it just kind of comes across, I think from the, the somewhat polite treble leads a, a little bit of a softness to the transients. It's actually interestingly, mostly felt in the bass. I think that the bass, um, just kind of like the bass attack is a little bit pillowy, a little bit soft. Again, there's not a lot of bass, so it's not so much a, a, a distracting problem. It doesn't like mud up the sound at all or anything like that. But if you're looking for like kind of a tight, punchy bass, even though there's not a lot of it, I don't think that that is where the moon drop land is particularly strong. And then I think also when you get into kind of dissecting like vocal resolution, like mid range resolution, transparency, and just like kind of like that, that finer detail in vocals, I think the land is a little bit too soft and a little bit too smooth to really bring that out. So overall, I would say the land is not necessarily the most engaging sound, which maybe is what some people would expect of a neutral tuned I am, but I know that a neutral tune doesn't have to necessarily be dull and not that the land is especially dull, but I did find myself just generally having to listen at a little bit higher volume levels than I typically listen in order to bring out some of that, that life that I like. Otherwise, if I listen at my normal volume listening levels, it does sound a little bit, a little bit lifeless. So those are my general thoughts here on the moon drop land. A lot of really positive stuff. I think again, you know, I spent my, I spent a lot of time listening to more expensive stuff and sometimes coming down and, and, and listening to a $40 I am, I gotta like recalibrate my expectations, but for 40 bucks, what you're getting here, it's not bad. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. But what matters is how does it stack up versus those other IMs in direct head to head combat. And so let me pull in some other IMs and put this all in context for y'all. All right. Let me bring them in. And we've got a couple of other Moondrop IMs as well as one other IM that is not a Moondrop. So what we've got here is the Moondrop LAN, like we just got done talking about. Single dynamic driver, 40 bucks. Over here, we've got the Moondrop Chew, which I've already mentioned a number of times uh, at this point. Um, and for good reason, you can see there are some similarities here in the build. Uh, the Moondrop Chew you can get for just 20 bucks. It's also a single dynamic driver. Um, so what's the difference? We'll get into talking about that. Uh, there is, of course, the Moondrop SSR. Hello, my old friend. It's been a while since you've been on stream. Um, this is also a $40 dynamic driver. Basically, this is the precursor to the LAN. The LAN is the replacement for the Moondrop SSR. And we're going to talk about how, the, how they compare and where. Uh, there might be some places where I actually still prefer the SSR, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, and then finally here, we've got the 7 Hertz Sal Notes Zero. Um, which is just $23, also a single dynamic driver. And the reason I've got this one in and not some others is um, 
in this price range as well. When I did Concha Combat, which was a big tournament of uh, budget IEMs, this was my favorite IEM that was tuned neutrally like these others. Um, wasn't necessarily my favorite of the bunch, but it was my favorite of this tune. So I thought it would be a good reference point here. So let's get into talking about the sound signature and how these compare. Again, the sound signature here on the Moondrop LAN, it is neutral. It's got a little bit of a cute bass bump to it, but it's mostly a neutral sound signature, very relaxed in the upper mid range and treble. Um, gives it somewhat of a warm tilt, but overall, I think it's just mostly gonna be kind of a midsy, not super contrasty sound. The Moondrop 2 over here, it's also kind of a neutral tune sound signature, but I would say this is definitely a brighter tune. Um, it's It's got a, a little bit of an emphasis in kind of like the lower treble region, um, maybe a little bit less bass versus the land too. So overall it comes across, interestingly, overall it does come across more contrasty, a little bit less midsy versus this, but I think nonetheless, I would still describe this as more or less a neutral sound signature. Um, the Moondrop SSR is probably the biggest deviation here. In fact, these three, especially if you look at them on a graph, are all gonna graph pretty similar. The SSR is pretty different. Um, I still kind of call this a, a, a neutral sound signature, but it has, well, it's got a lot of upper mid-range forwardness, which just means that it puts vocals especially forward, more so than these other sets. And it's also got some lower treble forwardness, which you might, interpret as harshness, but um, in listening impressions, it's actually surprisingly smooth. Uh, and then the bass is more actually mid-bass focus than sub-bass focus, which means it kind of gives you a little bit more of a punchiness to the bass, but not so much of that rumble. Um, and that's kind of where this is. I think this has probably the most skew on things like vocal tonality um, that comes across maybe a little bit unnatural. Um, I think the, the tonal differences between these all you can kind of get used to the more you listen to them. Um, but if you're going back and forth between them, that's going to be a thing that stands out here with the SSRs, that the, the vocal tuning is a little bit unnatural. Whereas here on the Sound Notes Zero, the tuning is, again, it's basically a neutral tune. You maybe could talk, describe this one as a mild V-shape because it does sound just ever so slightly brighter, a little bit bassier than something like the LAN, um, a little bit more contrasty, but nonetheless, it is very similar. Um, you're not gonna, none of these are gonna be bass cannons, all right? If you're looking for a bass cannon, you're looking for a completely different IM than what I've got on here. Um, yeah, I would say that versus, yeah, again, the land, that there is just a little bit more extra contrast and especially at that lower treble range. So that's how they compare in terms of tonal balance. Let's talk about the technical differences. And again, set your expectations. These are sub $40 IMs, but um, there are some things, some things to uh, differentiate here. So uh, here in the land, technical performance, again, not at strength, it is a tonal, Total balance king, but in the technical department, I would say it is it is pretty average. Um, again, it does a really surprisingly awesome job with sibilant recordings um, and smoothing over theirs. It, there's never any uncomfortableness with the treble, but if you're looking for you know really uh, exaggerated imaging and staging and stuff like that, the LAN is it's not going to do that. It is pretty average in that department, um, and maybe where it's probably the weakest, I would say, is in. Uh, the the attack on the bass. It just kind of comes across a little bit soft, even given its levels, it comes across a little bit soft, a little bit pillowy. Um, the Moondrop 2, in contrast, actually comes across, I think, a little bit more technical than the LAN. And mostly that's just kind of coming, it's, it's from the tonal balance differences, I think. Because there is a little bit, well, maybe quite a bit more lower treble emphasis here on the LAN, or sorry, on the CHU. I'm gonna, I hope I didn't mix those up too many times. Um, here on the CHU, you get a little bit more incisiveness in the treble, which contributes to a, just kind of like a, a sharper sense of transient, right? So like when bass attacks is maybe one case, but you know, guitar strums, like you, you, you kind of have that initial high frequency peak that contributes to defining the leading edge of that sound and the chew because it's got a little bit more emphasis there in the treble. I think does actually a little bit better job of that versus the land. Now, the demerit here with the chew is that treble, uh, that lower treble, which I described as more elevated. And it is in fact, I think, kind of distracting and irritating to a point here on the chew. So for my taste, um, while maybe the incisiveness is a little bit better here on the chew, I don't think it's worth the tonal balance trade. So I, I, I do think I overall much prefer the sound here um, on the LAN. The SSR, 
is, I think of the bunch, interestingly, the strongest imaging and sort of like the biggest head stage. Again, we're talking about IM, so set your expectations, but that is kind of like a party trick on here on the SSRs. I think that it does a really, really good job of making the sound sound 3D. It doesn't necessarily sound any higher resolution or anything like that, but transients are a little bit better defined here on the SSR than they are on Milan. Um, and maybe because of that, maybe just because of the overall brighter treble, it gives just a, a, a stronger sense of 3D space, which makes the SSR, like that's one of the things I really love about this set. It makes it a lot of fun, despite the fact that its tonal balance is a little bit awkward. Um, so I think between these two, that's kind of like the, that's kind of the trade-off you're making. It's like, do you want the better tonal balance or do you want the more impressive uh, uh, head stage, I suppose? And, and I don't know. Uh, Maybe to some extent I'm overstating the differences, but when you're listening to them back to back, that is sort of a difference that stands out. And then here with the Sound Notes Zero, this is actually maybe kind of an interesting in between. Um, because I think that the treble on here is more incisive than what you get here in the LAN. Um, close to here. You don't think you get quite the same sense of imaging and 3D-ness that you do on, on the SSR, but I think you do get a better sense of contrast. Um, and separation here. I think also the bass gives you a better sense of definition here on the, uh, on, the on the sound notes zero versus the land, but um, I don't know, it's close. So I think in terms of just overall ranking these in terms of sound, like it's hard for me to pick between these because they're like trading off on differences. And then I think um, between these two, I actually probably prefer overall the sound here on the, the zero. Um, but then when it comes to form factor, which is what we haven't talked about yet, I gotta say, I think the LAN is basically perfect. Like I I have no complaints about the form factor. It's awesome build, nice metal shells. It looks attractive, if a little bit boring maybe. Awesome cable, awesome fit, no complaints. The Moondrop 2 has got the same nice metal shells. We can punch it on these um, with, I think actually a better paint job. I think the Chew looks nicer than the LAN. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I think it's just a little bit more interesting. And because it's basically the same shell shape, um, also fits me pretty excellent. The big downside here with the Chew is, well, okay, the cable's not removable. I could forgive that, except that this cable sucks. Um, you might notice that it's kind of a mess and I'm afraid to even pick it up and, and show you the cable because I don't like this cable. Um, so if the only benefit of getting a LAN for 20 bucks extra was that you got a nicer cable and you didn't have to worry about it. I would say it was worth it, but I think even the sound improvements on top of that make the LAN, in my opinion, the better buy versus the Chew, while, I mean, the Chew still costs 20 bucks, so there is that. Uh, form factor here on the SSR is also just precious. Um, I love how small these shells are, and you can see uh, the LAN is a small IM, and you can see even versus the LAN, the SSR looks minuscule because it is. Um, I love it. There's still metal shells, which I like. Um, and this one does come in various colors, which I, I like. It makes it fun. Um, although I will say that fit security on this is not as good as the fit security on the LAN and the Chew. These actually fit me more stably than the SSR. Um, although the SSR, once I fit it with spring tips, does get pretty stable. So no real complaints. And of course, I love this cable. Uh, and then finally, that will bring us to talking about the 7 Hertz Sound Notes Zero build quality form factor. Um, fit stability and, and comfort is actually not bad for me on this IM. I don't like the way this thing looks though, right? I, I, and that's just, maybe that's a personal thing. Maybe it's because I've got this goofy blue with the Ronald McDonald nose um, ear tips on it, but uh, I don't like the, the, I don't love the build on this set. And I have seen it in other colors. It does, it can look better, but I don't think it ever gets to the, the, the build quality levels here that you get on the Chew. Now it is 23 bucks, it's a lot cheaper. But just know, if I was saying which of these I would personally pick, even though I slightly prefer the sound on this thing, overall, I actually prefer the Moon Drop Land. And I guess that's going to lead us into wrapping up this review here of the Moon Drop Land. Obviously, a lot of good things to say about it. Some nitpicks, right? If this is a replacement to the Moon Drop SSR, I am gonna miss some qualities about the SSR. I'm gonna miss how small it is, and I'm gonna miss kind of that the imaging, that 3D-ness to the sound, which the land does an okay job of. It's not bad in the technical. It's just a little bit unimpressive versus something like the SSR, but I think nonetheless at 40 bucks, 
honestly, this is a really solid IM, and I'm gonna have to give it four stars out of five. If you wanna check it out, I got it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this review helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and join the Discord server, which I've got linked also in the description. We got some conversation going on about the land, about a bunch of other things, and if you want to be part of the conversation in between reviews, I think Discord is a really good option. Um, otherwise, stick around for the live chat, and I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Have a good one.